We quit early the other night, but we're back again for another good long night's work, and we decided that we would start tonight by moving this machine out of this very tight working area to the other side of the room where we have cleared out a bunch of space so we can work on both sides of the pinball machine uh, without uh, any other machine getting in the way. So we're going to start tonight by doing that. And then uh, I think the second thing we're going to do is pull this play field off and add the missing lights in. And after that, I will show you a new test program I wrote that will help us identify the numbers of each of the lights and, and set up uh, all the lights so that they're numbered correctly. So that's our first goal, depending on how much time we got, and we're working a fairly long night tonight, so we might have some time. Uh, we'll move to the, to the back box and we'll go ahead and replace the lights in there. So that's our plan. We'll be back in a few minutes after we get the table moved. So, we have the pinball machine moved to the other side of the room. We have space on both sides, as you can see, to work. And we have our work table over there. We've turned out the overhead lights so that we could look at the play field a little bit. And Mike has some concerns about the light placement that we're going to try to address. And we just wanted to show it to you. Uh, so, one of the easiest places to see it is right here. And it shows up exquisitely well in this video. The, the GI light that's mounted under the table is not lighting up this entire strip here like a normal GI light that's stuck through the table would. So normally the GI light sticks through the uh, steel on the side here, keeps the light from shining out on the table, but it lights up the whole green space. Our LED being so directional and mounted so low isn't doing that. And there are other places, like right here, you can see there's a bright spot and it's not lighting up the rest of it. And, uh, you know, over over on here, you can see there's a, a, a sorely missed area right here that's dark that we need to light up. And, and there's also up here where the the ball is lit up. There's an area, but, but part of it's dark. So what we're going to try and do, one of the things we're going to try and do while we have this table out, is we're going to try and push those LEDs a little deeper into the hole to see if we can get the light up farther. If that doesn't do anything or doesn't do enough, um, we will probably look at finding some kind of plastic diffusers that we can add to the table or to the LED under the table that'll diffuse the light and make it uh, more uh, uh, omnidirectional when it's under these uh, plastics so that they light up the plastics more evenly. Uh, so right now uh, we're missing the six lights I mentioned before, uh, the, the three that go in here, the eight ball, there's a spot behind the eight ball, and there's one right under here that's missing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull this table out and we're going to put those in place. Uh, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll probably try and move a few of these other LEDs around, assuming we have enough wire uh, available to do that. And uh, then we'll come back to you guys. So for those of you who are watching, our plan to use the uh, little terminal blocks failed because our wire is too thick to put two of these wires into one terminal block. So what we're going to do instead is do a staggered splice and solder of the wires. And then we're just going to put one piece of shrink tubing over them all. And 
you know what? I should not have put the staple in here yet. It is in my way. I thought I had so much wire in there. And as you can see, each of the solder joints is spaced far enough apart that they won't short out against each other. A single piece of shrink tubing should cover them all. to join. So I just wanted to, to point out something. We started using a different stapler. This uh, is an Aero Model T2025 and it shoots round-headed top staples. Uh, so we're using these now. It also has a guide that latches over the wire to keep you from shooting any staples into the wire. So I'll show you how it's done here. Get the notch over the wire. And that's it. That one didn't go in very far because of the angle I was shooting at. Uh, let me go around to the other side and do that one again. You hear us say that, let's do that again a lot around here. There you go. Nice and tight, but it doesn't crimp into the wire. Okay. So we have completed the wiring of the additional LEDs. You can see our uh, uh, solder and shrink tubing job there. Uh, the data comes in here, goes through that one, over to that one. Then it runs over to there, there, there and back to the next pop bumper, and then finally it joins up the other string. And in this process we also removed an LED uh, that we had previously installed. So now we're going to turn the board up and I'll show you what it looks like on the underside. It might be a little dark because of the way the lighting is set, but you can see how we've set the LEDs inside each of those pop bumpers. Uh, plenty of clearance to put the tops on, and we've got two LEDs so it should be nice and bright in there. Uh, so, we'll show it to you again after we get it into the table. We are back at the machine. We have finished the wiring. And uh, what we just got done doing 
was moving the power supply. It used to be sitting down in the back box or in the bottom box, and we moved it into the back box. We ran this power cord over to the side and tapped it onto the 110 volt leads that feed the main transformer that power the rest of the machine. So now when we turn off the machine, the LED power supply will go off with it. Before, it was plugged into the utility outlet down there, which is not switched. So the LEDs would stay on when we powered off the machine, and that was getting to be a bit annoying. So we're about to bring the play field back in, set it up, and wire it back up. Uh, we do have some LEDs to finish wiring up, so we're going to turn off the camera while we do that, and, uh, and then we'll bring you back when we power everything back up. Hi. At this point, you are probably expecting to see us put the play field back into the pinball table and hooking it up and showing you all the lights working. However, that little wiring error I pointed out earlier in the video threw a complete monkey wrench into our plans. Uh, when we turned the table back on, none of the LEDs worked. Everything was messed up. It was obvious we had made a wiring error. Uh, we didn't catch any of that on film. We took the table back out. Uh, troubleshot figured out that I had crossed the wires uh, and that was due to the fact that we have different color coded wires so some of them are red white green and some of them are anyway whatever the colors were they were different and I ended up connecting red to red and white to white and I shouldn't have done that red to red was correct but the white did not go to the white and uh, that wiring error ended up connecting ground to the signal wire and signal to ground and so the whole thing just did not work. Uh, so it took us an hour or so to troubleshoot that down, figure out where the problem was and get in there and fix it and put it back in and then we started playing around with my configuration program and that caused problems too and we kept doing that for a while and eventually uh, Mike mentioned that it was 1130 and seeing that we were rapidly approaching divorce territory I figured we needed to wrap it up and call it a night. Uh, so right now I'm gonna take you a little bit into the code of the test program uh, and then uh, tomorrow we're gonna go back down and work on the table some more and I will film that test program in action. Uh, so stand by and we will show you a little bit of the test program code. Okay, on the screen here you will see two different programs. The program on the left is my test program that will help me identify which LEDs are which on the game board. And on the right is the actual program that is running in our little board that maps the output from the MPU of the pinball machine uh, to our LED lights. Uh, so looking at the right hand code, this is the code that actually runs the game, uh, I have a couple of arrays and in these arrays the LEDs are identified. And uh, of most significance are these LEDs that are in the main sort area because these are the controlled LEDs. So the very first LED in the array is zero, the number zero coming out of the, the MPU uh, tells me to light uh, ball one. And ball one is currently mapped to the 32nd LED in the string. So uh, as we change the LEDs by adding more LEDs, these numbers shift around and we have to determine what the new numbers are. So to do that, we use this test program on the left. And this is a very simple program. I'm just going to step through it very quickly for you uh, so you can kind of understand what we're doing. But this program is designed to light one single LED at a time. And it does that through inputs from uh, your keyboard from your laptop. So you have your laptop hooked up to the 
uh, to the computer. You have this coded loaded in it, uh, and uh, you tell it which LED to light up. So if I wanted to check to see if LED 32 was actually mapped to ball 1, I could come in here and say turn on LED 32 and see if ball 1 lights up. So basically, at the beginning of this in the setup, we just turn on the serial input. Uh, we uh, set our LED strip brightness uh, to the default value of, of 255, which is full brightness. Uh, we, uh, we, we start the strip running. We clear it so there are no, no lights set. And we showed that cleared string. And that basically turns off all the lights. Uh, then uh, we go through this little input loop. It basically says, if input is available, stand around in this loop while one. So that's an infinite loop. Uh, inputting data until you get a character count. Uh, and you're, what you're looking for uh, is a... Uh, Uh, a carriage return or a, a new line that says I've gotten to the end, uh, a plus or minus sign, uh, or some number. Uh, if you get a minus one, that means you get you got some kind of error, and you just ignore that and you keep going until you get a uh, uh, a new line character in. Uh, so if you get a number in, you you add that to the incoming value. You take what was in the incoming value, multiply by 10, add this to it, and that will keep adding up. And that'll, that's a classic way of inputting a decimal number. Uh, so once you get a uh, new line in, uh, we come down, clear the strip again, in case some other LED was turned on. Uh, we uh, check the range of the values to make sure uh, that it's not... Uh, so we, we check the range of the values right here. So first we check to make sure that uh, we haven't exceeded the total number of LEDs. Uh, so in this particular case, if we look up at the top, our number of LEDs is uh, 108. There it is right there. Number of LEDs, 108. Uh, so we check to make sure that we haven't gone above, in this case, 107. So the LEDs go from 0 to 107. And if it has, we just set it to the last LED. We also set to make sure we're not below 0. And if we are below 0, we set it to 0. Uh, and uh, then we just uh, turn on with this command right here whatever LED we've selected. So the current LED, which was the number that we had just input, that was between 0 and 127. Uh, we put that in here and we turn on that LED and we show the strip. That's the test program. Uh, so uh, if we were at 32 and we wanted to go to 33, we could either type in 33, new line, or we could hit the plus character and a new line, and that would advance it to 33. So that's it. Uh, and that's going to end this video. Like I said, we're planning on going to the uh, shed tomorrow uh, and work on the pinball machine again. Uh, tonight's Sunday. We go there every Monday and do work, or at least that's our plan. So, um, so we'll uh, show you this little test program, and, and hopefully we will get the main program uh, all set up and working, and then we can uh, uh, start working on the back box. Uh, so thanks a lot for watching.